G'day guys, today I wanted to talk to you about the impact that perception can have in your games of Warhammer 40k, whether that be the way you perceive your dice rolls to be above average or below, or how you perceive your opponent's conduct to be. Do you perceive them to be a cheater or do you perceive them to be a genuine honest mistakes kind of situation? And then we're going to wrap it up by talking about how you can alter your perception and then use that to improve the quality of your game and get better results at tournaments. Because after all, one of the main purposes of this channel is helping you achieve better results at your Warhammer 40k events. And I think that altering your perception is a very powerful and effective way to do just that. So stick around to the end of the video for some practical examples of what you can do to improve your results. And I hope you enjoy the video. Look for the blood gun. G'day guys, today I want to talk to you a little bit about perception in Warhammer 40k and how this interesting component of psychology intersects with our favourite hobby in a really interesting way. So we all know those people that will complain about their dice rolls. They'll say, oh I rolled so many ones or I rolled below average on these instances and that cost me the game and that was the problem, right? And then we also have those people that will say, oh I only lost because my opponent cheated, he got these rules wrong in his favour and this, that and whatever, right? And all of these things are instances where your opponent is judging the state of the game based on their perceptions. However, if you look at the way psychology works, you actually can change your perceptions by changing what you focus on. So in the dice rolling example, if you actually like just cold, hard, mathematical, you know, analyzed a game, you would find that you almost always roll exactly average, right? The number of dice that are rolled in a game of 140k is so high that the probability of the sum of all of those dice being below average is very, very low. So ultimately, you will roll average in almost every game. So when you have a game and you feel like you rolled below average, what that's actually telling you is that you have been focusing more on the times that you roll below average and not focusing enough on the times that you rolled above average, you know? So there will be times where you would have rolled above average, you might have passed more saves than you were expecting, but not, you know, not taken note of it mentally, but you are taking note mentally of the times that you roll fewer saves than you would expect, you know? Or there'll be times where like, you know, your opponent will roll to hit and he'll roll nothing but fives and sixes and he'll get tons of hits and then he'll roll to wound and he'll roll tons of wounds and you'll be like, oh my god, my opponent's rolling hot. And then you'll proceed to roll above average saves and you won't really notice it because you're focusing so much on the negative. You're going in with that negative mindset, that negative perception, uh, like a lens that you're putting on and that's, that's colouring what you actually see and you don't actually realise that you rolled better than average on your saves because your the lens is filtering out that good rolls and it's only showing you the bad ones you know and this is so provable the amount of times that i'll play a, an opponent and they'll roll saves and they'll be like oh god what a trash roll and then you'll look at it and you're like that's exactly average you, you know you, you just passed 10 out of 24 up saves but when they see those 10 fails you know, because they're looking for the fails and they're going in with that negative mindset, they see more fails than they do successes. And this is something that you can actually actively change. And this is something that I did. When, when I was first starting out in Warhammer 40k, I noticed I was, I was very negative. I was always like, oh my God, every time I go to roll a charge, I fail. You know, I fail all my nine inch charges. But then you'd be like, well, hang on a minute you shouldn't pass most of your nine inch charges you know mathematically you should pass like you know one in three or whatever the maths is right so it's like well hang on and then i'd look back at it and I'm like i actually did pass one in three so i actually was on average you know so that's that's sort of what i'm getting at here is that if you when you're conscious of it and when you're aware that this is a phenomenon where you're you're perhaps exaggerating the bad luck that you've got when you become aware of that, you can then actively pivot into focusing more on the good roles and paying more attention to those 
And if you invert this paradigm where you're now paying attention to the good roles, your enjoyment of the game will skyrocket and you'll start really loving the game because you'll be focusing more on the good stuff that happens or even focusing more on when your opponent fails their saves, you know? And that makes the game way more enjoyable for you because you're now focusing on the positive. So that's something that everybody can do. There's no you know, trick to this. There's no barrier for entry. Everybody can do this. And every time you verse somebody and they're complaining about their dice, you, know, you can remind them of this. You can remind them that, well, actually, mate, you rolled exactly average in this instance. Or maybe you rolled slightly below average, but then if they complain about that, be sure to point out to them the times when they roll slightly above average, you know, and just remind them that it's not the dice. And the reason that I want to bring this up in, on this channel is because I'm passionate about player development and player growth. And when you have this realization that it's not actually the dice, you know, and you stop blaming the dice, that then frees you up to look at, well, what, what actually was the cause of you winning or losing that game, you know? I think far too often people lose a game based on dice rolls and then they they, they'll lose the game and then they'll blame that on dice rolls and then as a result they don't actually learn from their actual tactical mistakes you know like maybe they shouldn't have hinged their entire game plan around making three out of three nine inch charges you know that's probably the problem you know or maybe even couldn't even boil down to your list building you know maybe you didn't build in enough insurance into your list so that if you were to fail three out of three charges you should still be fine. You know, you should be building in assurances into your list so that you don't have to deal with that problem, you know, going forward. So this is something that you can only really do when you stop blaming the bad dice, you know? When you stop blaming them and you accept the responsibility of your roles, that's how you get better at the game. And one of the best ways to do that is to shift your perception so that you're no longer focusing on the bad roles. You're no longer even noticing them. You're prioritizing your attention on good roles. So that's the first piece of advice. And then the second piece of advice on this episode, which is continuing the theme of talking about perception, is when your opponent gets a rule wrong and it turns out that it's in their favor, like it's a rule wrong and they benefited from this mistake, a lot of us are very, very fast to accuse that person of cheating. We're, we're quick to attribute malice to that because they benefited from it. So, I mean, if they wanted the benefit, then they would have an incentive in getting the rule wrong, right? And a lot of us jump to that. And often when you've got that same sort of negative mindset going in, you'll notice every time your opponent makes a rule, gets a rule wrong in their favor. But you won't necessarily notice when they get a rule wrong in your favor, you know? And you won't, and even if they do, you won't make a big song and dance about it if you're going in with that negative mindset. And as a result, it, there's this a massive asymmetry between when your opponent gets a rule wrong in their favor versus when they get a rule wrong in your favor. For some reason, we as a community are often quick to go, if the rule is wrong in their favor, they're a cheater. But if the rule is wrong in my favor, they're not a cheater. And it's like, realistically, the, the, getting the rule wrong is the offense, right? Whether or not it's in their favor or your favor or no one's favor or whatever, it doesn't really matter. And that doesn't say anything about the, the offense, which is that they got a rule wrong. You know, people make mistakes. We shouldn't be judging people by the consequences of their mistake. At best, we should be judging them on the frequency of mistakes. If they, make, if they get 20 things wrong in a game and every single one of them hurts them, you know, like they go, they, they're playing their Marines as Toughness 3, they're playing their Bolters as Strength 3, you know, they think that their Marines are only Leadership 6 when they're actually Leadership 8, you know, they, they just get all this stuff wrong. They should be almost equally punished as somebody who gets it wrong in the other direction, right? Because they're making all these fucking mistakes and that's bad. So... I guess the, the point I'm trying to make here is that, that often we will, we will attribute malice to these things and then we'll blame losing the game on the fact that our opponent got several rules wrong. Instead of actually looking at it and going, well, hang on, maybe I lost that game because I misplayed my units. And maybe my opponent getting that rule wrong 
Yes, that gave them a slight edge in this instance, but maybe they got other rules wrong during the game that didn't give them an edge. Or maybe I got rules wrong that gave me an edge that I don't even know that I got wrong. Maybe that's, you know, something that went under the unnoticed and under the radar, because that happens a lot as well. So when you start looking at the game going, look, you know, I got some stuff, maybe I got some stuff wrong, he got some stuff wrong, some of it was in my favor, some of it was in his favor. Either way, I'm not going to blame winning or losing the game on that. I'm going to look at whether or not I made decisions in the game that lost me the game. Did I pick bad secondaries? You know, so you can pick bad secondaries and it doesn't matter how many rules you get wrong, you're still going to lose the game. It doesn't matter how many slight under average rolls you do, you're still going to lose the game because you picked bad secondaries. So that's sort of the, the general theme here is that you, you need to break free of that perception of, you know, my opponent got all these rules wrong because he's a cheater, or the perception of, oh, I just rolled like dog shit and my opponent was rolling super hot and that's why I lost the game. Like, break free of those perceptions, invert them by intentionally paying attention to the times when your opponent got his rules right, which just obviously happens way more often than they get them wrong, right? So pay attention to that and be like, wow, we managed to get through a game of 40k and we only made two mistakes. That's really good, right? So focus on the good. And then instead of going, oh, I rolled under average here, here, and here, be like, well, I rolled above average there, there, and there, right? And now you've got this positive mindset where you're like, that game was actually good. It was, everything was fine. Everything was, you know, um, amicable. So then you can look at it and go, but I still lost. And then you can actually reflect on the real cause of losing those games. And when you do that, you'll learn how to get much better at playing the game. All too often, people blame other things, and therefore they never address the real cause, and therefore they never learn the skills, and never learn how to actually turn those losses into wins. So I just want to really strongly hazard against that. Now, obviously, I'm not... Uh, delusional. There are times when the dice will absolutely betray you, um, particularly when it comes to those those really important roles, where you know you should, you know, on maths you should this should work and then it doesn't. So an example could be uh, back in like seventh edition there used to be this thing called seize the initiative. Those of you who don't remember, basically what it was was both opponents would deploy their armies. You would know who's going to get first turn whilst deploying. And then before the first turn, you're, the person who's going to get second turn could roll a d6, and if they rolled a six, they then stole the initiative, they seized it, and then they got to go first, right? So it was a very rare instance, and I remember playing a game once against Liam Hackett, which is one of Australia's, arguably one of the world's best players. Um, and basically, I won the roll to get first turn, so I had to deploy first, then he got to deploy, and then because I had to deploy first, I got first turn. That's how it used to work. Um, and knowing this, I deployed hyper, hyper aggressively. I deployed everything on the line because I was like, I know I'm going to get first turn. And if I get first turn, he can't hide from me. I'm going to destroy him, right? But if he seizes the initiative, I lose, right? But that's a one in six. So I deployed like this knowing that that meant that I had a five out of six you know, chance of winning against one of the best players in the world. I was like, I'm going to take those odds, you know, because if I try to deploy conservatively and try to scrap with him and try to go tit for tat, he wins because he's just a better player. So I was like, no, nah, I'm going in for the, I'm going to take my, my one in six chance. And then he managed to roll the six, seize the initiative, proceeded to win the game. So that was an instance where I can legitimately say I lost the game because of a dice roll. You know, those things definitely happen. And then there are also those times when, you know, you go into your psychic phase and you fail all of your psychic powers. And you're like, okay, now that's a problem, you know. So these things do happen. And obviously in those times you can reflect on it. However, in those times, I would argue that the best form of reflection is not to just go, I only lost because of the dice rolls. The best form of reflection is to go, well, what can I build into my list that doesn't rely on such swingy rolls, you know? 
you know, perhaps instead of going a very psychic heavy army, maybe I go with something like a chaplain who has, you know, litanies that go off on a two plus instead of one that requires a psychic test, you know, or, you know, those sorts of things where you're, you're making decisions in your list to mitigate the probability that luck is going to impact your game. And then the same goes for if your opponent got a whole bunch of rules wrong, you know, because sometimes there are opponents that will maliciously cheat. Unfortunately, it is a reality that that happens, right? And the best way to insulate yourself against this is to know their rules, question things that seem too powerful, you know, have their codex, uh, ask them if they have a codex with them, which everybody should be bringing a codex to the game. And then while they're doing their turn, just ask them if you can hold their codex, right? And then just every time they're using a strat, just find it. Just be like, what's the name of that stratagem? Find it. When they're shooting with a unit, pull up its data sheet, you know? This is going to be even easier in 10th edition because we're going to have ready access to all of these things. But the point is, is that you can insulate yourself against your opponent getting rules wrong by increasing your understanding of the rules and calling them on them, you know? And that way you're learning a skill. Instead of sitting there and going, oh, I lost because he cheated and then getting mad, go, well, I lost because he cheated and I didn't stop him. That's the much more appropriate way to to develop that skill is to go okay cool yes he cheated and yes he's a dick for doing it and he shouldn't have cheated however i can stop him from cheating by learning the rules and having easy access to the rules that i don't know and that i don't understand and realistically if you get to a tournament most tournaments will have this rule where if your opponent asks you for a rule you must provide it you know you must have a copy of the rules on hand so, as a result, if your opponent goes, well, can I see the data sheet for that unit? You have to provide it to them. So, if you're versing somebody and they're shooting you with something, you can ask them for that data sheet and you can make them give you that information. And that way you're insulating yourself against that misplay and you're doing an active engaging in the game and developing a skill and insulating yourself against other people's mistakes and getting better at the game. So these are just a few practical things that you can work on that will ensure that you never have to blame your opponent cheating again and you never have to blame dice rolls again because you're building things into your list to make sure that the dice rolls don't punish you and you're developing a skill set that makes sure that your opponent can't cheat. Um, If this is something that you'd be interested in, I could do a separate video on each one of these points because there's a lot of ground to cover here. Uh, particularly with the learning how to prevent your opponent from cheating. That's, um, that's something that I'm very passionate about and something that, um, you know, and I shouldn't say cheating because I, I genuinely believe that the vast majority of mistakes that are made are genuine. I don't think people cheat as anywhere near as often as they are accused of cheating. I think oh, it's a very complex game. Hopefully it's about to become simpler, but at the, as it stands, it's a very complex game People make mistakes a lot. It's hard. So I try to be as charitable as possible with these and try not to make accusations of cheating. However, I'm not naive and I do know that those things, unfortunately those people do exist. And I think the appropriate solution is to develop the skills to insulate yourself so that if you do face one of those players, it doesn't matter. It actually doesn't matter because you've developed the skills to catch them and prevent them from being able to do it. And then, once you have that skill under control and you also have built a list that doesn't rely too heavily on these big swings, these big lucky dice rolls, that's, those two things can go a long way to improving your skill and your placings as a player. And it all ties back to managing your perception. If you perceive people to be cheaters, then you're going to have a much harder time learning these lessons. And if you perceive the dice to be against you, you're going to have a much harder time, you know, learning these lessons. So the first step, you know, in in learning these skills is to change your perception. Start focusing on the fact that, you know, most of the time you get almost all the way through the game without a single mistake being made. You know, and most of the time, the vast majority of your dice rolls are relatively average. And as a result, you can't be mad at the game, you can't be mad at your opponent, and if you lost, the only person you can be mad at is yourself. Uh, Yeah, so I'll leave it there. 
Uh, I know this was a little bit longer than usual, but let me know if you would like me to see this video separated and do two separate videos, one on each of these topics. If that's something people are interested in, I would be more than glad to do so. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Alrighty guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure to head over to blogfortheblloodgod.com where you can show your support for this channel. You can pick up merchandise like these shirts. I've got objective markers, I've got dice, I've got battle mats, I've got all kinds of really cool merchandise available on that website. And that's a really great way that you can show your support for the channel. Also, if you want to join the Patreon and the Discord community, that's a really good way that you can show your support whilst getting one-on-one -on -one coaching with myself. So either way you want to go, we've got you covered over on blogfortheblloodgod.com. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Blog for the Blood God.